know the history. We gave our lives to write down all the truth. Now, the truth is that there were very, very evil, naughty Jews along history. Definitely, we're not trying to say, no, 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 all Jews are righteous. Jews never sinned. No, only Jesus never sinned, guys. To your fake imagination, to your craziness that you're making up, Jesus, Jews with Jesus. Listen, Jews are not going with Jesus. Jews does not believe in Jesus. Jews knows the truth about Jesus. Jews knows that Jesus messed up. And it's okay. You have all the archives that you for generations tried to burn. Made gigantic bonfires, putting all the Gemarot, all the Talmud, all our Bibles, all our books, trying to burn it. For what? Why do you burn holy books? Why are you burning holy books? Because you don't want to hear what that is really written over there. You got a clue what is written in the Talmud. Guys, you don't have a clue what is written in the Talmud. Beautiful side curls. You will see that Yaakov Avinu had the face of an angel, the face of Yaakov with two beautiful side curls are carved on the throne of honor. You will be ashamed of yourself for even bringing it to your mouth that we are fake Jews. Then been sacrificed for that. What are you talking about? Why to start making a war against your own siblings to your claim that you are our brothers? You want to be the only Israelites? Come on. Only black? You think only black? Only black. Only black. Because the tribes were born in Africa. This is the power of imagination that is closing your mind from understanding the truth. It's written on Abraham Avinu that when he was walking with Sarah, his wife, in Egypt, and the Egyptians wanted to kidnap Sarah, he was afraid that they will do so. And Rashi, the holy commentary on the Bible, the holy commentary on all the oral Torah, is bringing from ancient Midrashim the answer to that reason. Because Abraham knew that Sarah was white and the Egyptians were black. And that's why he was scared that they will like her so much. Because she was unique. Because she was special. Because they never saw someone white before. And Sarah was so beautiful that Abraham decided to hide her. And when it's written about Tzipora, the wife of Moshe, that she was Ha'isha Hakushit, that she was a black woman. So the explanation for that was not that she was black, was that she was sticking out in the crowd like a black person in white crowd because everyone there were white. I'm sorry to break your assumptions and we are not claiming that black people are not Jews. We have many siblings that are Jews and are black. People from Ethiopia that are definitely Jewish. And guys, in Judaism, you have that mitzvah of conversion. People from different nations can convert and join the Jewish community. People from different nations can convert and join the Jewish community. And if black people or white people, and who cares from all kinds, from all variety of, of skin colors, like someone cares about... I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Rechaha, Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you, brethren. Shalom to the elect. So, um, I saw this video like, a couple of weeks ago and I just said well I'm not going to mess with it but I came back it popped back up again so uh, this video is titled where ancient Israelites black and what I want to go into this video on is the fact that um, when someone titles a video this way they have a motive you know one way or another when we title it where the ancient Israelites black we have to do that because we want to refute the lies and hypocrisy but now these same people who say skin color don't matter, you would think that they wouldn't even title a video like this. But um, he also goes on to say, it's quite a few things he said. I'll just try to sum it up, make it quick. Um, 
he he goes on to say that it doesn't basically matter the color, but um, the Israelites, Sarah was white, and the Israelites were white, um, and they never seen anybody like that before. <laughs> well, we know incidents incidents in the Bible would ha happen to Miriam, but that's not the case, right? And we're going to get into some some scriptures. Um, and try to prove that not many just a couple scriptures and prove that you know that these people they've always you know through white supremacy they've always um, kept us believing that there was a white Jesus in the Jesus that they say, claim they don't believe in <clears throat> but anybody can convert but yet none of their temples are in the hood Right, so there's a lot of things to consider on that, but yet uh, Elder Mike, Vocab Malone, and the rest of them will say that these are the chosen people. So if these are the chosen people, why aren't they going to try to convert them to Christianity? Their fight shouldn't be really with us, as they say, perverting the gospel with a Jew and a Gentile. Well, what about this? They don't even believe in the Messiah. So you would think they would be pushing the envelope, right? The, the foot to the floor, the gas to the pedal, the pedal to the metal, you know, to try to convert them back in the ways of being chosen people, right? But all you see is soft shoe interviews and a few of them who bring in the, 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 the Messiah, but there's no real argument and fight over that. You know, I would think that, okay, instead of the argument is only the Israelites can be saved. Well, wait a minute. What about the Messiah? There's a group of people who don't believe in him. So why aren't you apologetic Christians pushing the envelope? Just doesn't make sense. Anyway, he says the Ethiopians of Jews, <laughs> right? Um, other nations, what he's saying is they have to convert, you know, and they don't care about skin color. He also goes on to talk about Zipporah and Moses, and they're the ones keeping racism alive. They're the ones keeping the skin color thing alive, right? It's clear just because you have the same complexion doesn't mean you're the same nation, right? You got Ammon and Moab, all right? You got Hamites and Israelites. You got different dark nations. You got different, you know, uh, nations of with brown hue. So I don't know where to get this from, but this is the push. He also uh, says that I, I don't know who he said tried to cover their books. There's a lot of things in the in the books that I, I can't do a video on, but hey, that's what it is. Let's go to Exodus. Let's go to Exodus 2. Um, Exodus 2. And I might jump around a little bit. And this is the story of Moses. Um, let me read this. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took him a wife, uh, a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived, bare a son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could not uh, not longer hide him, she took him uh, an ark of bulrushes. So you notice he, you know, she put him in there, and she laid it in flags by the river bank, and the sister stood afar off, you know. So we're gonna get to the point. Pharaoh's daughter rescues Moses, and the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river and her maidens walked along by the riverside and when she saw the ark among the flags she sent her maid to fetch right and when she had opened it right she had opened it she saw the child and behold the babe wept you know the babe cried and she had compassion on him and said this is one of the Hebrew children so, 
did this so-called black woman that was supposed to be a pharaoh looked and seen a white child that was supposed to be a Jew and how did they make the distinction that this was the Hebrew child see this is the racism that they're pushing or let me say colorism when you go into the the true understanding of it it was because of the circumcision because the Hebrews was remember the child was three months the Hebrews was known to circumcise their children right now you mean to tell me this man would be raised as a as an Egyptian and he would be a white man? <laughs> There's several instances on that. But anyway, then said the sister to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call the a nurse of the Hebrew woman that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother, and Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it, and the child grew. Okay, and she brought it unto Pharaoh's daughter um, and became her son. And she called his name Moses. And she said, Because he is, uh, I have drew him, that's what it means, drew him out of the water, drawn out. So, um, there's another section where Moses flees, flees to Midian. Um, now, you did, when you go to history in, in Egypt, you did have the Greeks that eventually conquered Egypt. But for the most part, um, when you look at the timeline and what happened with Egypt, um, and this man admitted that um, the Egyptians was black and Sarah was white, and... Um, the median night was a, a, a um, African, so Moses was a white man. So they're the one pushing the racism. They're the one put. They're telling us what you see them telling us is you shouldn't go in skin color. It has nothing to do with color. But yet this man says it quite a few times. They was astonished at her white skin, Sarah's white skin. Where's an astonishment in that, or where's the excitement in that? That is not the case. You had nations, you had two different nations of of uh, different uh, of the same, pretty much different shades of brown. That's crazy. But she took the Hebrew ch uh, ch child and didn't say, "Oh, he's white." That's how I knew he was Hebrew. Get out of here. Then this man says we didn't took and burnt all the books. Now, the last time I looked during the Renaissance, that's exactly what happened to us. And you have to ask yourself, why would you burn something and get rid of something if it was already authenticated and if it already looked like that? So why would you take the images that were so-called black, repaint them, take the black images off and repaint them? We're not talking about refurbishing the images. They literally took the images and just wiped them all away. Right? But Moses is right up in Egypt, fitting right in there. That's crazy. But he was a white man. <laughs> We're also going to show you something as well. I always go through this. But let's go to the 19th verse. Um, the 19th verse. And, and they said, uh, let me go on. It says, Moses flees to Midian, right? And it says, and they said, an Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and also drew water enough for us and watered the flock, right? And they're talking about Moses. And Moses was content to dwell. She gave him, um, Moses Zipporah, his daughter. So when you go to the uh, understanding of that, an Egyptian, so they concluded from his dress and appearance, perhaps, even from his speech, it would be natural for them to make this mistake and for Moses to remember it. Uh, so it says right here from his speech, from his clothing, and from his appearance that it was 
natural for them to make a mistake that he was an Egyptian. So, what this man is talking about is crazy, right? So, when you look up this word, I, I like to go into this Phineas, Phineas, um, the grandson, I believe the grandson of Aaron. Let me see. Phineas um, means the mouth of brass, right? And we're going to look. We're going to look that up. I always go through this every time we bring this up about the color. Even got into it with one of them at uh, when we was at camp on this. Um, Phineas, it means um, in an Eastern 1897 Bible dictionary, Phineas means the mouth of brass from the old Egypt. It, it goes on, says, or from old Egypt, the Negro, the son of Eleazar. Right, the high priest, Exodus six and twenty-five, the grandson of Aaron, right, Eleazar. It says the mouth of brass, the Egyptian Negro, the Nubian, the black Nubian. So why is Phineas being called the Egyptian Negro <laughs> if everybody was white in that line of lineage? Again, not making sense. Daniel seven and nine. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. You know, I know he was talking about the long curls, right? And the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like to pure wool. Right? And uh, most of these translations say like the pure wool. I'm just reading the translations. All of them say like the pure wool white wool like the sun had white woolly hair right so there's nothing wrong if you want to say white wool but the pure wool right let me see here see if I see another definition of it in wool it seems that they all pretty much um, bring in the definition of wool, but I just went and looked up um, something else. Uh, let's go up here. This is dictionary.net. It says in 1874, it says the soft hair of sheep and other animals, closely curled hair of Negroes. This is what it says. Um, it says, soft curly hair of sheep and other animals, short, thick hair, right? Soft curled or crisp species of hair. Um, let me see here. It says, other animals, fur, fleece, sheep. It says, 1916 version the soft fine curly hair covers sheep goats etc etc thick crispy curly hair as of a negro as of a negro so when you see woolly hair you know us israelites we have different textures of hair right and now some are more strained and stringy now but with going back in that time and he said the hair of pure wool. Let's go back to Daniel. It says the ancient of days did sit. Um, and his garment was white as snow. And his hair of his hair were like pure wool. Right? So this is clear that it, you know, when you're dealing with the woolly hair, it can be short and bushy. You know, and thick and crisp, and it can be even longer. Clearly, it was not no stringy long hair like this guy's talking about. Anyway, that's all I have on that shallow one.